Just do these 80 problems on lead code and you will be sorted. Just solve two some problem, LR you cash and most of the companies would be done for. Like even Google maybe. Just sit daily, learn patterns, solve 150, 400 problems and you will be sorted. You must have heard advices like this on YouTube or different places, right? Honestly, many people actually follow it. They solve it on the lead code. They follow the same practice problems that many other people are solving. They memorize the pattern, increase their count and in fact, some of them actually grind daily. But even after solving hundreds of problems on lead code and understanding all these patterns and all, still the students are not able to perform in contest or actually mess up in the actual interviews. They struggle with debugging, they face a lot of issues related to not knowing what to approach on a new problem. They don't know how to write clean code under time pressure. In this video, I'll share the three big problems that I've seen people doing while practicing on lead code. If you fix just these right, you will probably boost your performance by many folds. The third one out of them is probably the one that I've seen everybody doing in fact. Let's get started. Let's start with the first point which I feel is among the most underrated problems that people face, which is writing clean and neat code in interviews under time pressure. You might think that practice when you are doing it on lead code is very similar to how things will feel in interview, but it's not the case. In interviews, you will be under real pressure. And in that scenario, if you are not writing good code, if you are not able to write clean implementation, that can be troublesome. Not just for you, but for interviewer also that they might not be able to understand the logic even if you are writing it right. When you solve lead code daily, what happens is you are just doing it for the count and you don't mark the timer, number one. Number two, you might take hints from the solution tab a little bit, have a look at the code and then go and write the code, number two. Number three, you might have seen similar problems on lead code before because you are practicing on patterns. So you just write a similar kind of code. But when a new problem comes in an interview or in a contest, you are not able to think about it. So you may have solved 300 problems but this can be a problem in a real interview when you are in time pressure and you're not able to write clean codes yourself. How do you fix it? Number one, start giving timed contests. That's going to be the biggest advice that you can take. No matter what kind of practice of questions of DSA you are doing, please give at least lead code weekly every week. There is lead code weekly happening on Saturday, the Sunday's weekly contest. There is ad coders contest, ad coder beginner contest that happens on Saturday. At least give these three things which happens on weekends because you don't have an excuse that, oh, I was busy in the weekdays and I could not give it to some other reason, right? Please give them, it will help you enhance your problem solving skills in a time simulated manner very well. Now let's come to the second problem which I feel is even bigger. Many a times what I've seen is students find it difficult to debug their codes in an actual interview or an actual setup. Have you felt it? Yeah, I think I too have felt that, right? In daily practice what we do is we often look at others code or put it in GPT and get the debugging statements and all but it's not something that you can do in an actual interview, no? In fact, one of the biggest problem of lead code is it gives you the test case on which your code is failing but that will not be the case in an actual coding interview or in a coding test or in any contest, I feel. So you will have to debug questions without the test case. But when you are practicing, you are practicing with the test case. That's a very, very big problem. And I think many people don't realize it until they go for their internship or placement drives in most cases. So if you don't practice your debugging skills while you practice, you will never be able to do it in an actual contest. So what can you do about it? Number one, don't look at the test cases on which it's failing. Try to find the test case on your own. Number two, Learn the right debugging practices, like how can you write good edge cases, how can you do boundary case conditions, how can you uh, look about uh, how to solve some coverage cases, how can you look into finding edge cases using stress testing. These are very, very standard techniques that many people don't even know about. I have shared these kind of tips on my Telegram and you can find its link below. If you want to join, there are a lot of valuable things that I keep sharing on that Telegram group. And number three, uh, after fixing the bug, please note down what mistake that you made, at least for the first 200, 300 problems, because I often see people making similar mistakes again and again. If you don't write, you will forget it. And once you start writing it, you tend to not make that mistake again. Third, and the biggest problem, and I cannot stress how difficult it is to get over this, right? Everybody in India in today's time is practicing topic-wise. The sheets are topic-wise, the playlists are topic-wise, the questions are tagged. All the students are going to different topics and solving questions of that particular topic and thinking that they will be able to solve questions in the contest. That's not how it works. It feels great when you are able to master a topic because you are solving all questions say of binary search. But do you realize that you know that it's a binary search problem? In a real contest, you will not know which topic this question is from. So there are two parts. 
given a question, you know which topic it is, and then once you know the topic, you know how to apply that topic or how can you solve questions in that topic. You are training just the second part. What about the first one? Who will come and help you with the first part in an actual interview or in an actual OA? Have you thought about it? And believe me, in real contests, this is the real reason why you can't get logic of many questions because you don't know which topic it is from. Whereas even if you knew that topic very well, real contests don't come with tags. They twist and mix different topics. And if you are not able to detect tricks across topics, you will never be able to solve them. So you have to practice that way. This is why I recommend that when you are practicing some sheet or like if you're going through some course, once you're done with certain topics, try to have some mix of questions also from the topics that you have already learned and then practice in a mixed way. Giving contest is a really good way of doing this. In fact, contests is, I think, the biggest add-on that you can add to your DSA practice. Keep giving Lead Code Weekly every week. I keep taking discussions also of very, very good questions from Lead Code Weekly. You can come join on me on live of this channel and we'll discuss those questions. Always keep thinking about, after giving a contest, that which topics you're weak on and you're not able to detect and maybe practice few more questions on that particular topic. This feedback loop will keep helping you improve very, very fast. Generally, the simple logic of improving is once you have, once you know almost all the topics, like say 100 problems, 120 problems you have solved, you should give contest, get a feedback on which topic you could not solve. Try, go and practice that particular topic for say, 5, 10, 15 problems maximum, then keep doing mixed practice till the next contest comes. If you just do this for a year or even like three months, I feel, you will see a drastic improvement in your topic detection at least. In fact, your whole DSA growth. These are the top three mistakes that I've seen people doing on lead code. There are few more like looking at solution before even writing your own code or listening to a video before trying to think on the problem on your own, things like this, right? But I think if you fix just these three first, I think your growth will happen very, very fast immediately. If you're practicing daily, that's great, but also inculcate these right habits in your practice so that you grow fast. Don't just focus on the number of problems solved, right? The quality of your practice matters a lot. Learn to code under pressure. Learn to debug on your own. The third point was most important. Think about problems beyond just topics. How do you detect the topic of that problem? If this video helped you, make sure to fix these things in your routine and you will be set for your DSA skills. Which of these three mistakes have you been doing? Write down below if you are facing any of these three issues, if you were doing these three issues or you are facing some other problem in your practice and I'll comment below what you can do to solve them. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And if you enjoyed this particular video, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll keep making content that will help you grow fast. Like this video is to make the YouTube Baba happy and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.